Hey Miss Brandon's class, welcome to our ELA channel. Today we're going to be reading Sally Ann Thunder Ann Whirlwind Crockett. It's a tall tale retold and illustrated by Stephen Kellogg. About 200 years ago, a remarkable infant came into the world, beaming like a sunrise. Having nine sons already, her parents were overjoyed to welcome their first daughter. Howdy! I'm Sally Ann Thunder Ann Whirlwind, shouted the baby in a voice as loud as a blast of buckshot. Her parents were astonished. You can talk, they cried. I can out-talk, out-grin, out-scream, out-swim, and out-run any baby in Kentucky, she announced. You're amazing, exclaimed her parents. Their sons, however, had been hoping for another brother, and they did not agree. She's a loudmouth and a liar, grumbled one brother. Everybody knows that babies can't run, scoffed another. Especially baby girls, added the oldest. She couldn't outrun a loaf of bread, sneered the youngest. I'm ready to try, cried their sister. Let's race to the top of the mountain and back. On your mark, get set, go! Sally Ann Thunder Ann Whirlwind took off like a cheetah. Sally Ann blazed up the mountain, shooting past a gang of racing rabbits, as if they were dozing tortoises. On her way back down, she met her brothers, who were just beginning the climb. I'll see you at the finish line, she called. So her brothers hadn't even started to go up the mountain, and she was already almost finished. She's really fast. When Sally Ann's brothers finally returned, they collapsed in the shade for a nap. Let's have a swimming race, cried Sally Ann. But her exhausted brothers had lost interest in sports. We quit, they cried. Sally Ann dove underwater and went fishing with the otters. When an hour passed and she didn't surface, her brothers became concerned. Has she drowned, they wondered. Suddenly, Sally Ann rocketed into view, juggling 14 trout. Grease the griddle, she cried, it's dinner time. Sally Ann's brothers finally admitted that their parents were right. She's amazing, they agreed. So they thought Sally Ann had drowned, but really she just caught their dinner. Sally Ann continued to astonish folks throughout her childhood. When she was one year old, she beat the fastest runners in the state. At four, she flipped the strongest arm wrestlers. At seven, she was the champion of tug of war team. So it sounds like Sally Ann has a lot of talents. On her eighth birthday, Sally Ann decided she was grown up and ready for new challenges. I'm off to the frontier, she announced. For several years, she lived with different animals and learned their habits. She loved life in the wilderness during every season except winter. Finally, the fierce cold drove her underground to hibernate with the bears. Deep in a cave that bristled with stalactites and stalagmites, Sally Ann snuggled close to a large, warm grizzly. Stalagmites and stalactites, those are these pointy um, rock formations that you see in this cave. Suddenly, the bear awakened and Sally Ann felt a blast of terrible heat from his great oven-like mouth. It was clear that the bear was more interested in a snack than a roommate. What do you think Sally Ann's going to do? But before the monster could swallow her, Sally Ann stunned him with a grin as bright as a flash of lightning. Over backward he went, rolling among razor sharp stalactites and stalagmites that skinned him from his ears to his toes. Naked and embarrassed, the creature scrambled out of sight. That was a close shave for both of us, cried Sally Ann. She wrapped herself in the bear's fur and set off in search of new adventures. So her grin scared the bear and it scared him right out of his fur. So Sally Ann got to use his fur to keep warm. 
the, the fur he left behind. That bear skin kept Sally Ann cozy for many winters, and she grew tall and strong. But as the years rolled by, she became tired of living alone. One day, she came upon an unhappy fellow who had dozed off while leaning against a tree and awakened to find himself stuck. Two eagles were adding to his misery by yanking out his hair to line their nests. You're in a pretty predicament, mister, exclaimed Sally Ann. Let me give you a hand. Sally Ann tried to shoo away the eagles, but they fought her like flapping furries. So she let loose a wild scream that blasted the color off their heads and tails and left them as placid as pigeons. Well, star spangle my banner, cried Sally Ann, thunder and whirlwind. I've just invented bald eagles. Unfortunately, the fellow Sally Ann was trying to rescue had been knocked unconscious by her scream. Quickly, she hauled six rattlers out of a nearby snake den knotted them together, and lassoed a branch. One sharp tug and his head popped free. He's kind of handsome, thought Sally Ann. I'll freshen up and look my best before I nurse him back to health. Sounds like Sally Ann's going to try and take care of this young man. Sally Ann grabbed a hornet's nest for a bonnet and fogged herself with the perfume of a passing skunk. Ew. Then she heaved her patient into the creek. Just as she expected, the minute he hit that icy water, he perked right up. My heart's pounding like a buffalo stampede, he sputtered. So's mine, confessed Sally Ann. My name is Davy Crockett. Marry me, he exclaimed. Sally Ann was astonished to learn that she had rescued the most famous woodsman in America. Lightning flashed between them and they fell head over heels in love. The happy couple celebrated their wedding with a batch of eagle egg eggnog. Then they settled down in a farmhouse with a fine view of the Mississippi River. When their first child, Hardstone, was born, all three of them whooped for joy. Let's have 30 more, cried Sally Ann Thunder and Whirlwind Crockett. Not long afterward, a city slicker stopped by and asked Davy if he would be willing to run in November. Thinking that a foot race was being organized, Davy replied, sign me up. Later, Davy was flabbergasted to discover that he had agreed to run for the United States Congress. What's more, he'd been elected. As soon as Davy left for Washington, D.C., Sally Ann started having trouble with the alligators. She hid her porkers in hollow logs, but the gators stole the logs and the hogs. They'll be snatching little hardstone next, fretted Sally Ann. Late the next night, a gang of bull alligators surrounded the Crockett's farmhouse. Sally Ann awoke to a tremendous racket. Ceiling plaster was falling, and plates leaped from their shelves. To Sally Ann's dismay, the hooligan reptile swarmed onto her roof to play king of the mountain. Chimneys toppled, windows shattered, and shingles scattered as the game got underway. Sally Ann tried to stop the alligators with a lightning flash grin. It had no effect. She blasted them with an ear-splitting scream. Get off my roof, she hollered. The alligators ignored her. Finally, Sally Ann flung herself into the King of the Mountain competition with such energy that she kicked up a tornado. In a few seconds, all the alligators had been blown away, and Sally Ann Thunder Ann Whirlwind Crockett stood alone as Queen of the Mountain. For the next few days, it rained alligators from Minnesota to New Orleans. Can humans really start a tornado? No, humans can't start a tornado. That's what makes this a tall tale. When Davy Crockett returned from Congress, he was so proud of Sally Ann's heroic feat that he couldn't stop bragging. He even interrupted a wrestling match to tell the story to Mike Fink. Now, Mike Fink was a keelboat captain, as well as a champion wrestler. He had tangled with alligators up and down the Mississippi, and he couldn't believe that anyone had trounced a whole tribe of the critters at once. 
Mike had his crew stitch him into an alligator hide. Then he set out to scare Sally Ann into confessing that her husband's Queen of the Mountain story was a bald-faced lie. Hey, so our character Mike Fink shows up again. He's gonna try and trick Sally Ann. Let's see if he succeeds. Mike crept up behind Sally, Sally Ann, and Little Hardstone. The King of the Mountain has arrived, he roared. Sally Ann whipped that alligator hide around so fast that the stitches popped and Mike Fink was propelled skyward. Did Mike Fink's plan work? No, it did not. Folks knew that every strong man in the Mississippi Valley who wrestled the mighty Mike Fink found himself thrown flat, so they were amazed to hear that Mike had been flung five miles upriver by Sally Ann Thunder and Whirlwind Crockett. The end. That's the end of our read aloud for, for today. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week.